Well, welcome to another episode of The Cutting Room Floor, a podcast here at Harper Church where we go a little bit deeper into the sermon that was preached, talk about maybe the things that didn't quite make it into the message this morning. I'm Pastor Sean. I'm the executive pastor at Harbor Church, joined by the preacher this morning. Pastor Caleb. Pastor Caleb. And also we have another great person in the studio with us here today. The Uh, big cheese. (laughs) The big cheese. I'm (laughs) Pastor Steve. (laughs) Pastor Steve, yeah. And we got to say thank you to Garrett Byrne again for being our audio and video engineer. Did a great job last week. Excited for you, man. Thanks for serving us today and serving our church. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So, Pastor Caleb, yes, thank sir. you for your message this morning. You were covering Acts, chapter, end of chapter 15, first part of chapter 16. That's right. And what was the title of your message again? What'd you call it? Man's Failures, God's Faithfulness. Yeah, it was great. And you began the sermon talking about how you've never been in a fight before. Never have. You're just no, too intimidating? I'm too intimidating, too strong. That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah no one's ever wanted to take this on. So. But we were just talking here about... Uh, our eldest elder in the room here, Pastor Steve. The actual elder. Yeah, who has yeah. been in some fights, throwing it down on the playground and uh, getting some brawls. Yeah? Well, that's kind of an exaggeration. I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I've been, I was getting a lot of fights, but I, I have. Uh, I did. In one in particular, I thought I remember I was. Um, I was at college age. I was home from uh, from college during the summer, and me and my brother and a and a friend had gone out to a rec center to play pickup basketball. And, oh. um, and so, um, we're playing these guys and, and I accidentally, um, elbowed, I'm sure it was accidental. I don't remember specifically, <laughs> but elbowed the guy right in, in, the, <laughs> in the face and, and he got a bloody nose and, and he wasn't too happy about it. And so, um, we're, uh, and by the way, I don't remember the, the fight, um, uh, because, which tells you how well I did in the fight. <laughs> So I can only go by what my brother has told me happened. That um, he so, knocked you out cold or something. Well, or like... he uh, he he was he. I was walking out. Apparently, I was walking off the court, and he came came and just cold cocked me. And oh, so man. apparently, we were fighting, and uh, and then they broke us up. And and then um, again, I don't remember any of it. Uh, uh, it. And then I started. They they actually kicked the guy out of the gym, but and then we. We went back to start playing basketball, and, and I started acting weird. And uh, my brother was getting kind of worried about me, and yeah. and uh, so he ended up taking me to the hospital. And um, and I, uh, I, you know, I don't remember any of that either. And uh, I, uh, I was I was in the hospital for about a day. I had a concussion. So, wow. but I, you know, I was thinking about. It. I, I remember Pastor thinking, Steve has some street. <laughs> I remember, I remember thinking that, um, you know, I'm wondering if, you know, I was wondering if I won and I think I asked my brother that, well, who, who, you know, who won this fight? And it's like, Hey, you're in the hospital, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think? The other guy walked away just fine and you went to the hospital. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my fight story. Awesome. Uh, Yeah. That's great. Man, he just walked up behind you and clocked you, huh? So I'm told, yeah. Like I say, I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> well, Pastor Kid, is this the way it went down between Paul and Barnabas? Was it a physical altercation sent one of the hospital? Or uh, just give us a quick synopsis of what you were talking about this morning. Yeah. Remind our listeners of that. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was not uh, It was not physical. It was, it was more of a heated argument, a heated altercation uh, between uh, Paul and Barnabas. And so there was, there was nothing physical involved, but it, tensions did get high, emotions did get high. Uh, and they definitely had some words with each other. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, cool, man. So yeah, Acts chapter 15, verses 35, no, 36 through 16, verse 5 is what you're preaching on. Yeah. The story of where Paul and Barnabas separate, which is one of the saddest parts of Acts, yeah. when these two two great men of the faith end up departing ways and going different directions and such. Yeah. Um, it comes right on the heels of Acts 15 with the Jerusalem Council, which led to a couple of questions that people wrote in. Maybe we'll start here this morning yeah. or this afternoon, I guess. Uh, the Whatever questions that is. come in were about Paul circumcising Timothy in chapter 16. Mm-hmm. So just to set the scene really quick, Acts 15, there's this issue with the Jerusalem Council. The Judaizers are saying you have to be circumcised if you're going to be saved, and that the conclusion of the council was a loud, resounding, absolutely not. You're saved yeah. by grace grace alone, um, don't need to be circumcised, that's keeping up the law, that doesn't earn our righteousness in any way. Yeah. And yet, in chapter 16, right on the heels of this, with Paul taking this letter to the churches that de- declares the that we're saved by grace, here he goes and circumcises Timothy. 
So what's up with that? How, how does that work out? Why would Paul do something like that when he's tri- championing the cause of the gospel, uh, the message of the gospel? Why would he cause Timothy to have to be circumcised? Yeah, <clears throat> it's a great question uh, and one that I wanted to handle on the podcast anyway. And so it, it was typical for Paul uh, on the missionary journey whenever he went into a, a city to actually go to a synagogue of the Jews first. Uh, and so, and we, we just got through seeing the Jerusalem council, uh, you, you do not add circumcision to the gospel, uh, whatsoever, but it says here in verse two of chapter 16, he, uh, talked about Timothy. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Uh, Paul went, uh, Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews, uh, who were in those places for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And so in order for him to have a standing for the gospel, in order for him to minister and witness to Jews in the synagogues, for them to even listen to him uh, as a young minister, Timothy being brought up by Paul, uh, that that's why he was circumcised, because if he wasn't, the Jews weren't going to listen to anything that he had to say. Uh, and that's that's why uh, Timothy was circumcised. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Pastor Steve, do you think there was any issue with, like, uh, you know, Paul will talk later about the weaker brother, like their conscience being seared, that sort of stuff. Do you think there's anything to that in what Paul was doing with Timothy, like trying to make sure that those believing Jews maybe or other Jews who thought that you still had to be circumcised, that Paul wanted to make sure that he was able to speak to them, minister to them, kind of like Caleb's saying, but issue of conscience there. Like, do you think there's that, any of that at play? I, you know, I suppose there might have been. I, I really think it was, though, um, that he wanted to, to be able to... Um, have a voice with them that um, that rather than um, right off the bat them being closed off um, that I, I think he wanted to have a voice um, with them and and so um, you know it, there could have been some aspect um, I mean I think that these were he, he was he was going to non-believing Jews too wasn't he in this yeah mm. and so um, you know I, I think it was more about just wanting to open the door to speak the gospel mm. and. And uh, I, th- I think these th- these kind of passages can be used um, wrongly in, in two, you know, a couple of different ways. One, they can be um, they they you can um, use it to to kind of excuse anything. I think you know during the you know in the '90s in the church growth movement, these passages, you know, that and, and you know, I can I, I have become all things to all people in order that I might save mm-hmm. some was used to to basically. Uh, Say we we just need to do anything we can to get people in the door, mm-hmm. and um, so we always got to be careful on these these passages because the the message didn't change, right? The right. message was always the same. The gospel didn't change. He wasn't change. He was just saying, "Hey, you know, if we can, uh, if 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 this is going to help us get in the door, this is going to um, and and have a voice yeah. and to be able to have an opportunity to share the truth of the gospel." Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's good. I think uh, I think it's Andy Stanley at North Point, I believe. W- one of their big missional, uh, not mission thing, um, values or statements they have about their church is that we'll do anything short of sin to win people to the gospel. And I think there's some good truth in that, but is that taking things too far by saying we'll do whatever? I, I remember hearing a debate, uh, I, I, again, I think it was Andy Stanley, but an Easter service they did, uh, they opened up with Highway to Hell, you know, and the message was, <laughs> You're on a highway to hell playing, is it ACDC, I think, yeah. or whoever that is? Yeah. Anyway, uh, they opened up with that as their opening song to <clears throat> gather people in, and but the message was, listen, if you don't repent of your sins, like, you're that's where you're going. You're on the highway to hell. Is that taking it too far? Like, is that... That that should, goes into the uh, the seeker sensitive yeah. type movement that, that I think you were talking yeah. about uh-huh. yeah. uh, a, a little bit, be, because we... We we should want to witness. We should want to uh, engage in evangelism and do anything short of sin to to reach somebody for the gospel, but not at the expense of being like the world or looking like the world. And so when when you've got lights and fog machines and you're playing ACDC uh, on the stage, uh, that's not uh, we're not supposed to look like the world. We're supposed to look like the exact opposite. We are the exact opposite. Uh, and so when we look like the world, what's there, there, there's no you, you don't have a standing for mm-hmm. for people who are looking for real answers uh, when when you're just the same as everybody else so 
Um, that's what it, came to mind. But. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think we got to be careful about just trying to draw the world in. Yeah. Um, we we want to we what we want to do, and I think what Paul was doing is saying, hey, I what I don't want to do, I'm going to this particular culture. Um, I don't want to have something that's going to block me from being able to bring bring the gospel. But he wasn't just saying I'll do. He, you know, he he's he's willing to give up himself um, for the sake of the gospel, and. Um, and I, I would be careful. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I wouldn't want to. I don't want to take my cues from typically from Andy Stanley. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. There, I think there's some other issues yeah. that, that he he has, and so that doesn't mean that he's you know he's wrong and everything. But I um, <laughs> just the things I disagree. <laughs> well, you, 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 but, <clears throat> excuse me. This this argument could be used for. Uh, the Christian who says that he's going to go evangelize uh, his friends at the bar, and so that's why he goes and stays out on Saturday night and ends up having one too many, and be, because he's trying to evangelize when that's not really you, you know a yeah. you know a tree by its fruit, right? And 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 faith produces uh, good works, and that's not <clears throat> going out and being like the world is not reaching uh, the world in in <clears throat> in the reality of the gospel and the truth of the gospel. So. Yeah, and in a sense, we don't need to fake people out to get them in to yeah. the church. I mean, that's what it feels like. It's like we're we're gonna we're gonna portray ourselves as something else, and then we're gonna give them the gospel. And I don't think that's what Paul was doing. In fact, Paul was going into their culture, uh, evangelizing, and 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 he, all he's saying is, let's not let's let's take down any barriers that are gonna keep us from ha- from presenting the truth of the gospel. He's not trying to fake them out or. Mm-hmm. Or anything like that, and and that that's what it feels like to me sometimes. That uh, with with some churches that they're just they're trying to a bait and switch almost. Yeah, it, it almost is. It's like yeah. you know, um, and uh, yeah, I, it, I think that's probably maybe a good term for it. Bait and switch. We'll we'll get them in, and then then we'll. And usually when they're doing that, they usually the gospel isn't. There, there's a there tends to be a lack of clarity around the gospel anyway yeah. because you're. The gospel is offensive to unbelievers, and and so you're going to want to. I don't want to offend them, so we're going to we're going to change terms. You know, sin. We're you know we're we're kind of broken, and and we need help from God, and rather than you know we're we're depraved, and and uh, I, I think you, when you do that, you just end up changing the message because you're already inclined toward not wanting to to offend in any way. Well, we also see. I don't want to jump uh, too far ahead, but in Acts seventeen, I'm kind of preparing. Oh, you can't go there yet. I'm, I'm preparing for that, but it, but it says when he goes to Thessalonica, uh, and, and we're not there yet. But he is he is reasoning. He reasoned for three Sabbath days, uh, explaining and proving from the scriptures why Christ had to suffer and why Jesus is the Christ. And so you see the word being preached all throughout Acts, and you see the gospel having clarity. Yeah, uh, just like what you were saying, Steve, and it's not. <clears throat> Lisa and I literally uh, were, were a part of a church one time, a long time ago, that uh, uh, they they did a Michael Jackson sermon series called "Man <laughs> in the Mirror," <laughs> and there was not. <laughs> if if you can, if, you're, you're probably already guessing that there wasn't very much uh, uh, Bible exposition <laughs> uh, go, or gospel clarity in that, and pro- there was probably a lot of unbelievers still in the church because. You're you're uh, you're you're providing lights. You're providing kind of a show, kind of a performance, and that's not what the church is. The church is the body of Christ. It's the people. It, we're, we're not trying to just win people over to come to this cool thing, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we take our cues a little differently at Harbor. Like we're not trying to be like the world. We're not trying to do the fo- fog machines and smoke light or yeah, fog machines, smoke lights, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think we're shooting from a little more authentic and where we can preach the gospel. We want to invite people in for sure, but we want to be able to make sure the message is clear, that we are sinners who need repentance, and the answer is Jesus. And so come to him, turn to him. And Pastor Pastor Seth has talked about this plenty of times, that Sunday morning is like the, the, the team huddle before we go out on the field. Uh, we, we need to be, we, we get together, we gather together to be encouraged by the preaching of the gospel, the fellowship with one another, the prayer with one another, and then we're sent out. That's this whole Harbor Church you are sent is not just something that we say, it's something that we mean. We're sent out uh, in order to be missionaries, in order to be uh, evangelicals in our communities. Yeah, that's so. good. 
Oh, wait, let me ask another question that also kind of came up as well. So that's the circumcision piece. Uh, Paul wanted to have a leg to stand on, wanted to uh, be able to witness to the Jews around him, so he had Timothy circumcised. Going back to the fight between Paul and Barnabas, who was right, Caleb? Who who was in the clear here? Is there a right or wrong? How does that work out? What do you think about that? Well, I definitely think there was wrong on both sides uh, because uh, the, the the argument probably shouldn't have got to that point where there was separation. Uh, but if you if you take a look at let's see here, uh, where are we at? A sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. Uh, but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been, this is the key words, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord, uh, which ta- taking from that, a lot, a lot of commentators, pastors, and theologians agree that uh, that the Jerusalem Council, James and Peter and all the rest of them, seem to favor Paul and Silas over Barnabas and Mark kind of parting ways. And really, from this point in the book of Acts, you actually see... Uh, Barnabas and Mark kind of disappear from the pages, and Luke follows the, the the second and third missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. And so, you know, it, it's it's hard to say. I don't think we have a definite. It was Barnabas's fault, but it does seem like favor was on uh, the Apostle Paul. So, yeah. yeah. Do we know anything else the, in your study at all? Do we see anything else in the Scripture this is referenced at all, or do we have any other context for what happened there? I'm just, I'm curious. Honestly, it's an honest question. Uh, um, what else do we know about the relationship between Barnabas and Paul and Mark and all that stuff? Yeah, well, I, I mean, Mark was Mark was definitely uh, young. Jerusalem was was his home. You you also I don't know if I said this in the sermon, but also Barnabas and Mark uh, were cousins. They 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 were related, and so not only you you have that added dynamic to it to where okay. Uh, Barnabas is probably going to be more naturally protective and defensive over Mark because they probably grew up in close proximity to one another and being relatives. And so, uh, and also Barnabas, th- this is the deal with uh, sons of encouragement and more empathetic people. This is where this is where I struggle. Is it, it's it's easy to uh, sacrifice truth for the sake of relationship. And so, uh, so so Barnabas could uh, easily got very defensive. Uh, against Paul for Mark, um, and, uh, and anyway, does that answer your your question? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. sure. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So so being uh, Barnabas, we hear him called what the son of encouragement, right? Yes. And that little and that was name means yeah. Like uh, 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 I think it was a nickname. Okay. I'm not sure if it means that. Yeah, maybe. And, and yeah, but he definitely encouraged an empathetic type of guy. Do yeah. you think that got him in trouble here? And is there application there for for us in our church, our listeners, about um, elevating relationships over truth or being super gung ho about the truth at the expense of relationships? Or like, what what can we learn from Barnabas and Paul and being the son of encouragement versus this preacher of the gospel sort of thing? Well, we should love one another, and and part of loving one another and spurring one one another on to following Christ is speaking the truth in love. And so sometimes you're going to have to have confrontations. Sometimes you're going to have to have hard conversations uh, when, when you're when you're walking together in, in the body of Christ, and not to have those conversations, not to speak gospel truth, not to confront sin. You're not really loving uh, horizontally the, that person in that relationship because you're not pointing them to the truth, or you're enabling uh, sin to take place, or a destructive lifestyle, or or whatever they 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 tend to fall into. Uh, and so, but just like I said earlier, it was, it was easy for Barnabas, easy, easy for sons of encouragement to hold on to the horizontal sake of relationship of being friends, uh, at the expense of what Paul was, uh, more concerned about. And that was the purity uh, of the gospel and, and, and gospel truth getting out, uh, and, and the work get, getting done. Uh, and so, uh, just, just being, being sympathetic to the point where you sacrifice the truth is not going to help uh, somebody that you're loving uh, in the Lord. So, mm. yeah. you know, yeah, First Corinthians thirteen, the love chapter, right? Yeah. It says uh, love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth, and Amen. and so it 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 always has to be rooted in in the truth, and I and I think we can we can think sentimentally about love mm-hmm. uh, oftentimes, and and that sentimentality can can get us into 
trouble where we're we're afraid to tell the truth mm-hmm. or or we just you know we're we're more wrapped up in the emotion or the feelings of of something rather yeah. than than actual uh, actual actual truth but love has to be rooted in uh, truth or it's yeah. not it's not it's not love yeah, yeah. And I, I think uh, it was Pastor Seth that said uh, not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, that, that emotions are good as long as they don't outrun biblical truth. Uh, we can easily get carried away with our feelings and our emotions, and we should not trust ourselves uh, to let, you know, d- don't follow your heart. Don't believe in Disney. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, uh, go, don't go in that direction because um, we, we, we're depraved and, and we're prone to wander. And so that's why we need to, just like you and I were talking about last week on the podcast, we need to uh, make sure that our emotions align with Scripture. Yeah. Pastor Steve, if I'm if I'm a person who's super empathetic and I never confront anybody, how can I grow in that? Like, what, what do I need to know, or how can I take steps to be more biblical, more godly in that regard? And, and on the flip side of that, too, if I'm a person who just loves the confrontation but could care less about other people's feelings and have zero empathy for anyone— <laughs> I mean, how, how how can I grow in those things? What do you think? Well, I think it, it, if you're on the empathetic side, I, I think, and and you're afraid to, um, um, I mean, oftentimes we think, well, we, we, we kind of blame it on empathy, but oftentimes it's really fear of man, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're afraid of how people are going to take us or, or we're, they're not going to like us. And I think... I think really just just praying about that the issue of fear of man and and uh, and and loving the person, uh, trying to understand that that true love is ultimately in the body of Christ. We're trying to move each other towards Christ, to, towards our hope in Christ. And when we see somebody who is who has taken their eyes off of Christ and found their hope in something else, um, we want them for their benefit um, because we love them. To, to find their hope because that's the best thing for them right and it's, yeah. and, um, and and so we yeah we've got to really uh, and I think for some people that are empathetic it isn't just necessarily fear of man but they, they really have to talk through that and um, and think about um, the, the other person and what's best for that person rather than just thinking in terms of feelings how this feels and and, and those kind of things yeah I mean and the other the other side I think is <clears throat> when somebody just is coarse and just ready to um, always just there it is truth 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 um, I think there's often a, a pride that goes along with that that um, if, if you if you want to be right for the sake of being right <clears throat> then uh, again you've lost your you've taken your eyes off of Christ you're just it's 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 self-centered. I think both extremes are self-centered ultimately, right? And uh, we should the pendulum. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. No, that 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 was. Uh, I mean, that's uh, maybe this is why the Lord gave me this uh, text to preach is because I just I see myself in Barnabas uh, mm-hmm. and being a son of encouragement. I do mm-hmm. uh, tend to be more on the empathetic side, and and I have to really, I have to really uh, be careful. Uh, not to sacrifice truth just because I love people so much, but just like we see uh, in this text and we've seen multiple times, <clears throat> sometimes your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. And I think here <clears throat> with the uh, with with Barnabas, the son of encouragement, something the way that God wired him uh, to be a benefit and to be a leader in the church, and w- w- it worked really well. Him traveling with with Paul because Paul could preach preach the truth and in in reason and, and and he was getting the truth out there and Barnabas was coming alongside uh and and loving the people you know compassionately and uh and, and so I, I think here's where we see like the way that the, the Lord wired him because of sin ended up uh leading him astray yeah so it's it, pastor Seth has said and I think we've talked about a little bit but sometimes your greatest strength can also be a source of weakness for you as well mm-hmm. case in point empathy if you're super empathetic that can lead you towards uh, non-confrontation and uh, fear of man can be in there and on the flip side if you are super confrontational and that's a strength of yours not no, no problem arguing can be a lack of love at times and all of that yeah one of the things that you I don't remember if you said it this morning Caleb or if you just wrote it and I read it what you wrote but something to the effect that God is not 
asking for all of us to be a Paul or a Barnabas. Like he's not asking all the Barnabases to be Paul and not asking all the Pauls to be Barnabases, yeah. right? What do you mean by that? Well, I I think uh, there there's we're, we're all members of the body of Christ. Uh, the Lord uh, has uh, fashioned us in in different ways and wired us in different ways. Uh, so so for instance, um, I'm probably going to be more. Uh, on the empathetic side than maybe Pastor Seth is, uh, and I'm probably going to be more prone to um, to fear of man than than maybe some others are, uh, just because of the way that the Lord wired us. But 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 just like you were saying, our our greatest strength or our greatest weaknesses, there needs to be. And this word has a lot of baggage uh, to it in our day. But there needs to be diversity in the church. It's a way that the Lord made up the body of Christ. And I, is it Corinthians talking about everybody can't be an eye, everybody can't be an ear. Mm-hmm. Right. We, we, we all come together and whether that's, you know, uh, scrubbing the toilets in the church or whether that's being in the pulpit or whether that's, you know, whatever. We, we all come together uh, as the body of Christ. And uh, and it's a beautiful thing to see that diversity uh, because Paul and his strength would be able to. And he does later when we get get to talk about Galatians, too. He's able to call out like he he's probably one that's not going to be more prone to struggle with the fear of man. He's able to call out. Uh, sin as it is to, mm-hmm. to their face mm-hmm. uh, because he cares about the truth and he he wants to do confrontation because he cares about the gospel. Uh, and he would probably be able to do that better than Barnabas would be able to do that. So we need each other. Uh, we need each other in the body of Christ. Um, and there's a reason why we're all made and wired differently. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. So, <clears throat> and, and I think, yeah, even amongst our elders, um, we need to, recognize I, I think our propensities and help each other to um you know because we're, we're going to kind of at, at times lean one way we're going to get you know some of us are going to be a little more sentimental <laughs> on the love side and and some are, are going to be a little more just sort of cold and or, or cold you know, true you right. know truth that's and, you steve you're cold hearted <laughs> it's the beauty of the plurality of elders that we yeah, see from yeah. scripture right and and so we need to recognize <clears throat> our propensities in those areas and 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 seek the help of other i, I think of one another too yeah. to to um and, and that's the that's the thing about uh talking things through too um issues in the church and recognizing that i see things a certain way and i sometimes need other people to you know to to maybe pull me back to mm-hmm. to uh, a, a more biblical way of thinking, uh, just because we just have these, we do have these propensities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We're all different. I mean, I think we even see that. I I saw that that this week in our discipleship group when we're just going through the scriptures that we're doing, you, you see everybody's different take on things Mm -hmm. and the way that they, 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 they they see the scripture from a different angle than I did. It's just because we're different. Uh, sometimes it, it might be a little off, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's right and it's dead on, but you're just seeing things from a different angle from a different light. And, and I think we, we need that uh, in our walk and in, in our faith and in following Jesus together. So, mm, yeah, good. Well, I thought you did a good job of preaching the gospel this morning, pointing us towards Christ. Um, but I think there, are, I, I'd love to talk a little bit and see if there's application, more application here for conflict and dealing with that. Like I was thinking, I think we talked this a little bit, marriage stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what were your thoughts on that, Caleb? Uh, as you worked through this text and stuff, um, how does this apply to relationships and conflict in general, and and maybe specifically in marriages and such? I think uh, in in marriages, ju- I mean, just looking looking at my my own marriage in the early years, Lisa and I got married at seventeen and eighteen years old, and so there was a just lot. Of, we were just kids. We Did you have kids. facial hair then? Like, could you even grow a beard? I don't think so. I think I had a peach fuzz mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, but we were just kids. We 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 were we were learning how to to be married, and the first couple of years were really hard because uh, I, I don't I don't think there was uh, uh, be, being faithful to uh, part of it is just being young, but being faithful to uh, to be in gospel community, being faithful to uh, to to be at be at church on Sundays, uh, and and to follow the Lord. And so, but, but if Christ, that's why, um, I talk so much about Christ being your foundation. I asked the question of what are you building your house upon? Is your house upon the rock? 
uh, of of Christ and 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 where is your hope? Because if if your hope is in your marriage, uh, to meet your needs or or or, or whatever, uh, or if it's just some some type of deal where you're just roommates and you have an understanding uh, with benefits, or or if your if your hope is in your children. Um, to 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 meet those needs that only God can meet, and your hope is not in Christ, then those arguments uh, uh, and those difficulties are going to get out of hand, and they're going to snowball really fast uh, because you, you, Christ needs to be at, at the center, the gospel needs to be at the center, and that's where your hope needs to be, and that's not that's not a one and done kind of a thing. Like I I prayed the prayer, I I you know that's a that's a lifelong. Salvation is a process. Every day you wake up, you mortify sin, you follow Christ, uh, you pour out your life, uh, and you serve one another, especially in a marriage. And so, so the, I mean, really the application was uh, marriages, and, and Steve can probably speak to this too, just being in, uh, in so much counseling. You, you got to get Christ back at the center uh, of your marriage. So, yeah. And being in counseling, meaning you do a lot of counseling. You're not yeah, uh, seen a counselor Pastor Steve doesn't days. need a lot of counseling. <laughs> well, he, I do need a lot, a lot of, of I do need a lot of counseling so. too. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's good. That was my answer. That's good. Yeah. As good or as bad as it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask one other question that I have, and then we'll see if there's anything else that you want to throw in there, Caleb, um, from your sermon. As of late, and it becomes more and more high profile, but there's been a lot of people, a lot of ministers, pastors, people in, in who we've regarded with high esteem who've burned out of ministry, fled out of ministry, quit, yes. controversy, whatever it is. You can think of like the stuff that came up, Ravi Zacharias recently, or Carl Lentz from Hillsong in New York, or, you know, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of names we could list over the past couple of years. People who many look up to um who they put their f- hope in or they see man this person's a, a godly figure i want to follow after them i'll be like them and then when they burn out or flail out or fall to sin that's that's a really difficult thing for people who looked up to them mm-hmm. um and i think the point of your message today was very very clear in that we should not be putting our hope in those people yeah. but our hope needs to stay in christ but how do we deal with that though when we are disappointed that you know ravi zacharias had all that stuff going on with um, sexual perversion and yeah. abuse and that sort of stuff. Um, what are we to do with that? Is it okay to be disappointed when that happens? What does yes. that say about my heart, who I'm trusting in? Like, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I would say um, if you're if you're not disappointed and you're not sad uh, or upset that, that 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 sin has happened in this type of way in, in someone's life, especially a leader, someone who's supposed to be, uh, up front, uh, preaching the gospel, leading, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You should mourn that, um, sin, sin is destructive, uh, and, and it should be repented of, and it should be mourned when a great leader, uh, falls, uh, like that. But just, just like we, we saw today, uh, the whole Bible is full of that. Uh, Adam and Eve in the garden sinned, mm-hmm. took the fruit, and you you, you see it all throughout. Uh, 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 was it Jacob, right? Who, um, uh, what did, what did he do with with Isaac? He uh, he he made it. He basically tricked Isaac uh, so that he had the birthright, right? You, you Jacob see, and Esau. Jacob and Esau, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, you you just take just about any any Bible character and just see the failure uh, in, in the midst of that because that's going to happen, and and that's that's what I think I said multiple times is, uh, you know, uh, failures are going to happen, people are going to sin because we're fallen, and 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 we are uh, sanctification is a process. There's definitive sanctification where you are saved and completely clean uh, because of the blood of the cross through faith by grace alone. Uh, that's the definitive sanctification, uh, but you are also in the midst of progressive sanctification, uh, and that means that we fall down and we skin our knees and we uh, sin sometimes uh, on the way to glory, um, and and that's going to happen. But at the end of the day, we can't hang to we can't hang our hats on on leaders on Ravi Zacharias on me on. Uh, Pastor Seth, we we just can't because we're mere men, 
uh, and uh, and we need to look to Jesus who will never fail us, um, and he's the one who sustains us to the end. So, yeah. Do we expect too much of our leaders? Like, are we putting them on too high of a pedestal, or is it okay to do that? I, I think of, like, um, not to name names at all, celebrity pastor folk, you know, and, like, you go to the conference and— uh, we have a podcast this... now. We're almost celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> with lights. our mass distribution Bro. of all twelve people who watch it every yeah. single yeah. week, <laughs> the, the tens of tens of people that watch actually listen to this. Quite a platform. <laughs> we have. Thank you for listening, by the way. <laughs> we love you. Come back, please. <laughs> <laughs> but but the celebrity pastor thing, like again, you go to the conference, like oh my gosh, there's that there's that preacher, there's that. I just I just wish I could talk to them, or I wish I could sit with them, or I wish you know. Uh, and we elevate them. Is that is that wrong to feel that way, um, or like I'm I'm just I'm thinking about a lot of people who are kind of in that not, not realm, not world, but who feel that uh, way. I mean, I think of that way. I mean, I, I think of that time that you and I went out to dinner at Anthony's with yeah. Steve Lawson. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I I I was just like, man, I'm eating dinner with Steve Lawson. So I was I I could hardly get a word out just because I was so excited that I got to have dinner with him. Right. Uh, and so it, it, the scripture says that, uh, that, that men who uh, labor in preaching and teaching are worthy of double honor. Uh, and I think, that, uh, I think that we should have honor, and I think that we should look to them, but our hope should not be in them. Um, if, 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 the leader, if the lead pastor of the church falls uh, or something like that, and, and the church disintegrates, I mean, it, it, we, the church has to be built upon the gospel, has to be built upon the word of God, because pastors and teachers and preachers and uh, hopefully not televangelists, <laughs> they're they're going to come and go, right? But Christ, uh, Christ stays, and He's constant. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the hard. It's hard. Um, there are some people that it's not surprising, you know, the televangelists. Some of the televangelists, you, you kind of like, yeah, I'm not that surprised when they they fall, right? right. But but that we're we're starting to see people. I think I think uh, Ravi Zacharias is a good example of that. Uh, uh, what's the other guy? Josh Harris. Yep, um, Josh Harris. Yeah. And you're starting to see guys that you think, okay, they're kind of our guys. Um, they're you know they're in the reform world. They're and and they're they're having uh, they're deconstructing their their faith and and so I think it does it 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 os- it should always cause us to look at ourselves and and do and examine ourselves and recognize that we're we're capable of of falling and um but it also um i think um i, I think it shows you it, it, it one thing i think it really should do for us particularly those of us who are in leadership positions in the church is to um help us to to um recognize um that I, I think a lot of these guys potentially, like I think of a Josh Harris, you know, found his identity in being mm-hmm. famous mm-hmm. and being well known and being followed, and and I don't know, I you know, I can't spe- speak specifically for him, but he found a lot of identity in deconstructing too. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he he all of a sudden he you know people are praising him on the outside too, and when you when you're finding your identity in your fame and your and you're um, in in the work rather than in Christ, um, then um, you're. I think you're in danger. Yeah. And so I think it should remind us of that that their identity always has to be rooted in the person of of Jesus yeah. Christ, and and that should be the case not only for um, for us as in, as leaders in the church, but as we look um, to these men who I appreciate. There, there's so many men that I look at and I go thank. Thank God for for these men that, yeah. that God has gifted to the church, mm-hmm. um, and yet if I find my identity, you know, I'm a I'm a MacArthur guy or I'm a Piper guy or or I follow Apollos. So yeah, I follow right. Apollos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we got to be really careful of that because um, ultimately our identity has to be found in Christ, and yeah. and uh, and uh, and that's you know, MacArthur yeah. didn't die for you. He wasn't, no, he wasn't he didn't. crucified yeah. for you. Yeah, if he th- was. Yeah, he'd, he'd be dead. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we can be thankful for these guys because they've, you know, they've ministered to me, and um, and uh, but uh, but I can't find my, I can't, yeah, I can't find my identity in those folks. Can yeah. I do a life group plug? Yeah, this is yeah. this is why you need to be in a life group. The, the the same thing goes for for just any member of this church. 
goes for for any leader in high high places, wh- whether fame comes or whatsoever. You have to be in gospel community. It's the same reason why we have a plurality of elders because we as brothers uh, live life together and we ask hard questions to one another and we love one another in that way. Uh, and, and that that helps us. That refines us. That sanctifies us. Uh, so that we can fight the good fight and run the race well. And if you are only doing church on Sunday morning for the hour or two that you're here, and not and you don't have that plurality of gospel community, then you're prone to wander in the same type of ways because we need each other. We have to be in community. We have to be known and to know others uh, because that's a, a God is a Trinitarian God in perfect relationship. And if you are isolated and you're not in relationship, uh, then I, you, you, the, the fighting the good fight is not going to go well for you. Mm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. So we have to be careful about putting our hope in men, yeah. how to put our hope in Christ, for sure. That was a big message that came through in your sermon this morning. Um, I think it's okay to be disappointed, like we're, like we're saying. It's okay to be disappointed and mm-hmm. saddened when godly men or people have influenced us uh, are sinners, yeah. but we should expect it at the same time. I think exactly what you said, Caleb, the Bible is littered with, the stories of fallen men who God chooses to use in spite of their fallenness to do his work in the world. Uh, and yet they're still broken. And even, even when God, uh, we're studying, um, about my discipleship groups working through old Testament stuff, we're reading about Saul and David right now and kind of the stories of, are surrounding them. And yeah. even David, the man after God's own heart, we know the story of him, Bathsheba, yeah. but there are many other instances in his life where it's like, gosh, really? Like mm-hmm. you can act that way. You're going to, you're going to do those things. That's, that doesn't seem like a godly thing there. Um, and yet, here's a man who repents frequently and who seems to love the Lord. Mm. But we shouldn't be surprised when others fall, uh, when we ourselves fall. Mm. And uh, we're all prone to that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, what else, Caleb? Anything else that you didn't didn't make the sermon that you wanted to hit on this morning? Any other thoughts for us? Or Pastor Steve, any questions and or thoughts post, uh, post-sermon here this morning? Don't have any questions. I, I, I really appreciated your, you know, you, you really kind of emphasize the um, that the the gospel um, advancing is not about our faithfulness, about but about God's faithfulness. Yeah. And I, I really appreciated you kind of hitting hard on that. And and even in this story, you see that there, you see it through the whole book of Acts. It's you know you have these participants in the advancement of the kingdom of Christ, but it's always the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Spirit that is advancing the kingdom of of Christ. And so Mm -hmm. even when you have these two men who are pillars, literally pillars of the church, who are disagreeing, the gospel continues to advance. And and it's because of God's faithfulness and God's... And, and it is it's the work of the spirit and, yeah um, so we're, we get to we get to participate in it which is amazing yeah but um, it is not dependent upon our faithfulness and, yeah. and, and that's I think that's a good way of looking at it, even with the you know we talk about men falling uh, and and uh, we, you know we may see more of that because of the pressure that's on the church these days uh, yeah. and um, but it isn't dependent upon men it's dependent upon Christ he uses Amen. men. Yeah, uh, but but I pre- I appreciated your emphasis on that. I think that was really helpful. Yeah, good. You yeah. said next I wrote down that was great to that point. Man was not able to thwart what God had planned. Yeah, know, which is just I wasn't sure whether or not to use the word thwart. But <laughs> that's a little bit. I don't know if anybody in twenty twenty one's talking the thwart language, but <laughs> it's uh, good though. It reminds us of the providence of God that He governs all things, yeah. and even in spite of our failures, our sins, or whatever, He is still. Um, in control and governing all things, um, and is bringing about his purposes. Salvation is a work of the Lord uh, from beginning to end, and that's why when it comes to evangelizing and witnessing, we can rest in the fact that he's sovereign. We can rest in the fact that he he's not going to, to, to lose any of his elect, any of his chosen, uh, but by obedience, with joy and encouragement, we share the gospel uh, because we want to obey uh, what he has called us to do, to be witnesses. Uh, but we don't have to anxiously toil as if it depends upon us that this person or that person actually comes to faith. Um, God's job is to save. Our job is to be faithful. Mm. Great leaders go astray, and people fail, and people's plans change. But God is faithful, and he never fails, and God's plan remains the same. So our hope is not in man, but it's in God. It's a big idea from your sermon today, and I think that's a good mess for us to continue to reflect on this coming week.
So thanks for that. Thank you for preaching this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to Steve to you preaching next week. That should be really fun. I'm, Papa Steve. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Hitting the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good. I will never forget, and I hope no one else ever forgets, uh, when you were preaching and you talked about the story of buying a car. And oh, leather seats would be nice. And yeah, I remember you, that illustration. Do you remember this? You don't remember this? I, I do. Yeah. I think you said something like, Is that yeah, why you got, got the Dakota? <laughs> no, <it's laughs> said something like, and and I heard God speaking speaking to me about that. He's saying leather seats are for people who have jobs, and it sounded a lot like Robin's voice. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, yeah. God God spoke to me in that moment in a voice that sounded a lot like Robin. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I will never forget that. That was a great illustration. Um, but we're looking forward to you preaching next week and mm-hmm. continuing on our next sermon series. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So until then, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to throw them our way. We would love to talk about whatever you guys want to hear about. Um, HarborQuestions.com, set questions regarding uh, this past week, past sermons, even Revelation. Steve, the answer man, will answer those for you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Axe, maybe Caleb and I can chip away at one or two of those questions. We'll try. But HarborQuestions.com, I would love to answer those for you. And we're looking forward to doing this again next week on the Cutter Room Floor Podcast. All right. So until then... We'll see you later. All right.